I'm going to share something with you. That might put me in a very negative light, yeah. Relationships are not my forte. You see if someone grabbed up my wife and saying, completely different ball game. I'll walk away from it and this has been like a therapy session. This is Kevin Cassis for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. We're at the Ben Davison Performance Centre here in Essex. I'm joined by Ben Davison. Hello, Ben. Hi, right, Kev. All good, mate. All good. Uh, first of all, um, how's Lee Wood and how are you? Lee's good. Lee's positive. Um, obviously, we're all very disappointed, gutted, upset. Um, but I'm also proud, obviously proud of Lee. I'm very thankful as well, thankful for the people to the people of Nottingham for the support that they've continually shown Lee um, and the atmosphere that they've created and, and that. So, um, yeah, mixed emotions, obviously. Obviously, it goes without saying prior to the fight, um, literally no one picked this fight to go the distance. We know with the, the punch power, not of just Lara, but also... Uh, the punch bow of, of Lee Wood, this was going to end inside the distance. So let's kind of talk like rounds one to four. How did you think Lee was performing? Obviously, to note, he was uh, ahead on all three judges' scorecards uh, as that knockout occurred. But yeah, the first four rounds, were you pleased with everything that you were witnessing? Yeah, there was obviously a sticky patch at the end of the second, but, uh, you know, we were very aware that... Um, there was going to be some sticky patches early, especially um, in the fight, but there were some scenarios that played out um, that we'd been working on earlier in rounds one, one and two. Um, and you know, one thing I will say is I think Lara is an improving fighter. He was nowhere near as reckless as what we've seen him before. I think that there was an element of that because of the respect for, for Lee's power. I know he mentioned that since the fight, straight away in the interview. Um, but yeah, rounds one and two, I, I, overall I was happy with, but a sticky patch at the end of the second. But I felt like Lee um, got back to what he needed to, to be doing and uh, got hold of the fight in the third as well. As the fight kind of approached the midway stage, um, kind of, yeah, five to six, et cetera. Um, what was your kind of, kind of advice to Lee uh, in those kind of rounds? I'm not going to give too much away because there's obviously a potential rematch, but um, how I felt was I felt like Lee was on the right path to, to, to stopping Lara, breaking him down, um, doing what he needed to do. There was a few scenarios that kept occurring that... Um, That ended up having a part in the in the in the finishing scenario as well, um, which need addressing. Um, and I'm not oh, that's not Lee's fault. Um, it's just something for us to look at and and, and make an adjustment for. Um, but yeah, I, I, I was confident. Uh, I, I felt like Lee needed to to remain disciplined, um, and and I felt like he was on the right path, as I say, to to break him down and stopping him. So, uh, the crucial round and obviously the crucial shot that uh, was the deciding factor or one of the deciding factors to why the fight ended. Um, the most talked about, obviously, situation from the fight, which was no surprise, was what you did uh, and your decision with nine, ten seconds left uh, to throw the towel in. Um, so, when Lee... Had you made your mind up when he had got up, or had you made your mind up when he was down? No, it was a heavy knockdown, and when he hit the deck, I grabbed the towel in that moment, just in case I hadn't made my mind up. Obviously, I wanted to assess him. Um, he got up, was a, was a bit unsteady. But as, as he got up, obviously where he got, got knocked down, as he got up, I tried to make eye contact, eye contact with him. Um, and wasn't quite there to 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 do so, um, and then he got up was 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 obviously unsteady, um, 
And obviously, you don't know how long sometimes the referee... We saw it with Navarrete the other day. You don't know how long that count may be. The ref talks to Lee, brushes his gloves off, asks him to take a step to the side or whatever it may be. You don't know how long that's going to be. So, obviously, I, I tried to wait as long as possible before I thought the action would commence to see how I thought Lee was. It wasn't a case of... My decision wasn't a case of... Did I think he could see the end of the round out? That wasn't what I was thinking because... It, well, my decision was, did I think he could defend himself? No matter how long he's left in the round, did I think he could defend himself? Um, and I made the decision based upon the opinion, and not to say that he couldn't. I don't know, and we'll never know, and that's unfortunately that, that is part of having to make the decision that I had to make, is that it's left for interpretation. Could Lee have seen the rest of the round out? Um, could he have recovered? My opinion in that moment was that he was unable to defend himself and that was not a risk that I was willing to take, unfortunately. Mm. Um, whether I was right, whether I was wrong, I respect both sides of the opinions. There is no guarantee that I was right, there is no guarantee that I was wrong. Um, I, I, you know, All you can do is, is go based upon your instincts and my instincts suggested to me that he was... I wasn't certain that he was able to defend himself and that's why if he was able to defend himself, you know, two of the biggest comebacks in recent times I've been in the corner for. Tyson against Wilder, the first fight. When Tyson got up, it was the 12th round obviously, but there was lots of time left in, in the round. When he got up, I was confident he was able to defend himself. Against Mick, when, when Lee went down, he got up, the bell went. When I sent him back out, I was confident he was able to defend himself. Um... And, and that's the difference here is that I wasn't sure that he was able to defend himself. And, you know, as I say, that was a risk that I wasn't willing to take. And um, I respect both sides of opinions. And there's never, a, a, it'd be ignorant for me to sit here and say, oh, I guarantee what decision I made was 100% correct. You will never know. But as I say, it was a risk that I wasn't willing to take because my instincts told me that I wasn't certain he was able to defend himself. Not, I wasn't certain he could make it to the end of the round. That wasn't. It was if he could defend himself. Difficult one to answer, but kind of on the night, in that moment, and also three days after, today's Wednesday, the fight was, what, four days four days ago. Do you believe that if you hadn't thrown in that towel at that point, do you believe that Lara would have, uh, say, hurt uh, Lee again or knocked him out? Do you believe that that situation would have occurred? In your head, like if you were going to take a, a punt on that? I can't say. I can't say. Um, I can't say he would have. I couldn't, can't say that he wouldn't have. Um, I feel like I made the right decision. That's how I feel. But again, it would be ignorant for me to sit here and say 100% definitely this and definitely that, you know. You don't know, and uh, you can only go off your instincts. And like I say, the reason was that I didn't, I wasn't sure he could defend himself. When the fight then was called off, obviously the referee saw the towel coming in, and and that was his uh, obviously call to to end the fight. There, we saw some clips. I think Matchin put out of some dialogue that you had with Lee when you were kind of holding Lee. Were you then more convinced that you had done the right job? Because we heard you saying to him, "Look, basically, look." go out for another day, there's a rematch, blah, 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 and et cetera, and telling him he was hurt. But when you were kind of in that moment, were you more convinced that you had done the right thing when you kind of looked into his eyes? Yeah, I don't want to say too much because, um, one, they're obviously private moments as well. Two, um, you know, it's hard to go off of exactly what was happening in that moment because there would have been a hell of a lot of emotions for Lee as well. Um, he would have been bitterly disappointed, frustrated. Um, so his body language and, and all the rest of it may have been impacted by those emotions. So um, I can't base too much off of, off of that. All I can say is that I feel like I made the right decision. Um, what I will say is after the ring, after in the ring, there was a little period where I thought, oh, that, like, was it? 
a lot of people was coming over saying it was the right decision, but I was thinking, was it the right decision? And then, you know, I didn't feel like that for too long. After that, I did feel like, no, do you know what? I do, I do feel like I made the right decision. As I say, I, you can never guarantee. The only thing, you, the only thing, the only time you know it's guaranteed is when the fighters ended up flat on their back. And uh, you know, there's a time and a place where a fighter will want to go out on their shield, but taking into consideration that Lee had a rematch clause. Um, You know, it's, it, Mauricio Lara has won the battle, but I'm confident that Lee Wood will win the war. Um, and he can come back, regroup and, and go again. You know, he's, that world title is not out of his grasp yet. Two different situations in the past, one involving yourself and one more recently not involving yourself. I just wondered subconsciously, did any of these factors play a part? Two years ago, obviously, you was in the corner with Billy Joe Saunders and you had to make, uh, a, a, as part of a team decision, uh, in reference to Billy Joe and Canelo. More recently, um, another talked about situation that happened was Tundi uh, having the same sort of experience with, with Anthony Yard, which was literally three weeks ago or whenever it was, three weeks ago. So did any of them, do you think these things subconsciously that from two years ago and the one more recently plays a part in uh, your decision making in situations like that? I wouldn't say subconsciously. I would say um, I would say that I agree with both of those and I've said that before. I agreed with Tundi and that decision and I do feel that the decision to pull Billy Joe out was the right decision as well in that moment. Um, every situation is different and like I say, you know, I have been in those situations previously and given the fighters the best of chances when other people may have thrown the towel in. There's some ridiculous rumours, obviously, that I was going to close to stopping the, the Tyson Fury Wilder first fight and this and people had to stop me doing so. Absolute nonsense. Rubbish. When he got up, his legs were clearly underneath him. He could clearly defend himself. Um, and like I say... Previously with Lee Wood, when he boxed Michael Connell, I was confident he could defend himself. And that's probably the main thing, I think, to give a fighter his best. You have to give the fighter um, their best chance, of course, and every opportunity, within reason. They've got to be able to defend themselves. Um, so, yeah, every situation's different. Um, there's another situation that some can occur in a ring as well, where someone just... Um, they're able to defend themselves, but it's just a con they're taking too much punishment. Um, so you have to take each each and every time. It's it's a different and individual situation. And um, like I say, twice previously, I've uh, I've allowed the fight to continue and and, and the fights come back and and um, and done well. And I feel like I made the right decision in those uh, moments, and I feel like I've made I did make the right decision in this moment. However, like I say, I respect both sides of opinions. Um, that's just how I feel. I do want to ask you about um, Tony Belly's view straight after the fight. We know Tony Belly obviously came into social media, I want to point out, and kind of after a day or so, whenever it was, and kind of had time to kind of maybe digest it more and kind of look at the situation that Lee was in and also you were in as well. So, but on the night, Tony did say that he believed that it was a mistake to have pulled a Lee at that point. Uh, so, yeah, I just wanted your kind of thoughts on that, first of all. But also, he has come back on social media with uh, a, a little bit more of a balanced take on that. Yeah, to be fair, I think that a lot of people in the arena at the time, initially, and to be honest with you, if I'm being 100% honest, even Barry and Lee Wiley both said to me, a very, very initially, at the very start, they thought, mm, not sure. That's the God's honest truth. Yeah. But then they both said that they quickly realised actually it was the right decision. Mm. They felt, again, can't say that it definitely was. And I think that a lot of people in the arena felt the same. I think initially they thought, what? Like, it's a bit soon. And I think after they realised, um, or they felt that it was the right decision, I think a lot of people have changed their minds on it. And I 100% understand why they would think that, especially when you're at a distance. 
Lee was directly in front of me, you know, and um, as people say, you know, I spend every day in the gym with him. I know him. Um, I know... I know that... I know that he's shown that he's a warrior. He's shown... He's done that before. One of the first... Uh, this goes back to when I, when I first started working with Lee. I have said this before. But obviously there was talks of me working with Lee um, previously, some discussions, and so I went back and watched some of his fights. And there was a previous fight where Lee got hurt and he beat his chest. He beat his chest. And that screamed to me the type of character that he has and the type of person that he is and what he's got within him. And straight away I said to myself, that's someone I'd like to work with. So I know that he's got that in him. But there's a time and a place to show that and there's a time and a place to... to live to fight another day and again I keep repeating myself but I can't guarantee that he wouldn't have survived I can't guarantee that he would have um, that wasn't my decision making my decision making was I wasn't sure that he could defend himself and with a rematch clause in place um, and the way the fight was panning out you know I felt like I felt like my instincts at that in that moment was 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 to do that, and and um, I I do feel like it was the right decision. I spoke to Tony um, in terms of discussions, and I've you know I've got a lot of respect for him, and um, I understand. I completely understand. You know, there was other people as well that that initially felt that way, or still feel that way, and I respect that. Um, I completely understand. Um, so. Yeah, yeah. I think I'll echo those thoughts about what you said initially, watching it in real motion Did there, that, I felt, hang on a minute, there's mm. like 10 seconds to go. Yeah. Like, what's he done that for? That was the first fault. Then when I watched it on the replay, which was probably about a minute after that, I saw it close in and obviously realised like he, he wasn't in a, a, a fixed state to continue. But initially, my thought process was... Hang on a minute. Like, was that too soon? Has he thrown that towel in too soon? Or yeah, yeah the, the, the ten the ten second thing is relative. If somebody can defend themselves, obviously. Um, but if we was to stand here and count for ten seconds, it's a long time of someone throwing bombs at you. And uh, like I say, I, I cannot again. I reiterate, I cannot sit here and say that Lee definitely wasn't able to defend himself, or Lee. Um, definitely wouldn't have seen the end of the round. I, unfortunately, I can't say that. I wish I could. I've got to live with the decision that I made in that moment. Um, but again, the reason was because I wasn't sure that he could defend himself. If he, I was confident he could, different scenario. Um, just to kind of finish off on, um, obviously there was a lot of commotion happening after that as well. We had Josh Warrington ringside. We have... Maurizio Lara spitting at Josh Warrington. We know that that was always an option for them to have a third fight or two and a half because obviously that from the second fight I'm making reference to. But in terms of Lee rematching Lara, is there a situation that we could see where that fight with Warrington and Lara could take place ahead of a rematch with Lee and Lara? Potentially, potentially, I, f I think Lee's keen to do the immediate rematch, very keen. Um, I feel like he's very confident, again, as I said, that he might have lost the battle, that he can win, but he can win the war. Um, but yeah, you know, he's in a good position in terms of contractually. Um, and, you know potential step aside there to, to let them two fight, let Lee regroup for a little bit and p potentially meet the winner at the end of the year or whatever, I don't know. Um, or, you know, he, go, he can go straight into the immediate rematch. So we'll have a discussion with um, Eddie and Frank and, and the rest of the team and, and see what what we feel is the, is, is the right decision and, and how, how the land lies. Um, but yeah, obviously at the minute there's um, there's them three there to and, and at the minute 
Maurizio Lara is the one with a with a firmer grip. He's not got fully hold of it yet, but he's got a firmer grip on on the belt at the moment. Yeah, I mean, if people obviously would know this, for people who didn't know this, this is an opponent that was hand picked by you guys as Leeds fight. Because one of my mates said to me the other day, like he must have been a mandatory who doesn't really follow boxing, but he watched that the other day. So oh, he must have been a like basically ordered to fight. I said, no, he wasn't. I said he was picked by Lee Wood and Ben and the team. So it sounds mad if you look at it like that, that you have picked, but that's where Lee's in his career and we know that he will fight anyone. That was testament to that as well. Yeah, of course. Like, uh, we went into the fight. Well, initially we was offered some other opponents and as we've seen before with Kiko Martinez, who was one of the offered, he can easily cause an upset. Just as dangerous. I guarantee if you ask Josh Warren who punches harder, I guarantee he would tell you Kiko Martinez. Um, they're all a risk. They're all a risk at world title level. Um, they're all going to be tough fights. Unless you really pick a handy fight that you know people don't want to see. But I think that, again, we reiterated this before the fight, you're not going to get the best out of Lee Wood like that. And Lee's very aware of that. It's a position that Lee doesn't quite like to be in. Um, so, you know, Mauricio Lara beat the man who beat the man and, you know, beat Josh Warrington, who was number one at the moment in time, at that moment in time, and uh, how highly regarded he was. So, um, you know, we had a look at him and I, I still feel, stylistically, it's a it's a fight that style-wise it suits Lee. We know, I said this all along, you know, we, it, really there was the talk for those two that fighting to be the number one in the division. Um, of course that's not going to be an easy fight, obviously. Both guys have the power to end the fight at any moment. Um, I said before that Lee's dream is the city ground. Josh Warrington and Michael Conlon are the two tickets to do that city ground fight. Potentially now with a rematch with Maurizio Lara, we'll see. <coughs> Before the fight, those were the two tickets. So unfortunately, we couldn't get into the city ground at this time of the year. Um, so Lee said the next best option. And uh, stylistically, we looked and we felt like it's a fight that suits Lee. And I think that when you watch the fight, I feel like the path to victory now, I think a lot of people before couldn't see the path to victory. I think a lot of people now since the fight can see the path to victory for Lee. Um, and I still feel that way. Uh, we, again, we was well aware that both guys carried the power to potentially end the fight at any moment. Um, unfortunately, it didn't, didn't, the coin didn't land on our, our side this time, but... Um, yeah, you know, Lee was ex exceptionally well financially paid. Um, you know, it was, it was, uh, and I don't think from his performance, I wouldn't say that his stocks dropped at, at all, would you say? No, absolutely not. So, um, yeah, well, again, we'll see how the land lies, mm. but, uh, you know, for people saying it was a, it was a mad one to take, um, Lee's a champion, Lee, Lee, wants to fight who's deemed the best um, and um, yeah so okay well Ben appreciate your time on this Wednesday morning uh, like I said it's been a few days so we know you've got a, a busy week next week as well as the rest of your stable get into fights etc yeah Lee uh, McGregor yeah. Newcastle full for March and Pat McCormack uh, March the 18th. One th last thing I do want to say is I'm extremely proud of Lee Wood. Um, not only for his performances and the character that he shows, but just the person that he is inside and outside the ring. I'm extremely thankful to the people of Nottingham for the support that they've continually shown him. And um, yeah, please get behind him for this. Uh, for this next part of the journey, road to two-time, two-time champion of the world, and I'm confident that he will achieve that. Ben Davison, thank you very much for talking to IFL TV, and uh, no doubt we'll catch up with you again soon.
Thank you. I'm going to share something with you. That might put me in a very negative light, yeah. Relationships are not my forte. You see if someone grabbed up my wife and saying, completely different ball game. I'll walk away from here and this has been like a therapy session.